So what we had is a, a, a concept that seems to have grown in interest over the last few years. Actually, if you trace it back, you can see Unctad was talking about this in the early 2000s. And even before that, you could trace it back to Caldor and premature maturity and his discussion of that in the 1960s. I mean, we're talking about this sort of the, the, the uh, contraction of manufacturing shares of employment, or GDP. Uh, the overall, I think you can say that uh, maybe two thirds of developing countries seem to be going through such a process. Uh, certainly if you compare the, the early 1990s to the, the more recent data. And that matters quite a lot because manufacturing has important properties in terms of creating lots of jobs, uh, creating uh, spillovers and, and uh, benefits for economic development. Um, listening to the papers today, I think there's, there's some heterogeneity and nuance that's coming across. First of all, I think, although there may be deindustrialization, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, the extent or depth of it is different in different countries. It seems over time it's happening at an earlier stage and at lower levels of uh, manufacturing shares, so that's the kind of premature bit. Um, but when you drill down, it seems to be some of the, the uh, discussion was it's more, more visible in low-tech sectors versus high-tech sectors. It may be more visible in some part of the world than others. I mean, overall, the global economy hasn't deindustrialized in a sense of the, the kind of manufacturing shares of the global economy. So what you have is a reallocation of economic activity and developing countries trying to capture bits of that manufacturing activity. And as more and more countries compete in global value chains or for bits of global value chains, I, I think that's spreading manufacturing thinner and thinner and thinner. So the ability to use manufacturing in the way it was used in East Asia to create jobs and economic development, I think is, over time is becoming harder. So al although the precise pattern of premature deindustrialization is, is, is open to discussion, I think the, the, the existence of it is clear enough. So I think it's, it's, much, it's getting harder for developing countries. Um, the, the optimist view is that there are certain modern services that have similar characteristics to manufacturing, uh, particularly in sort of high productivity. The extent to which they create jobs, I think, is, is much less clear. So it may be that we're, we're heading to an era where economic development may be in high evaluated services, but whether that will create sufficient jobs for the population uh, I think it is, is a more open question. In terms of what countries can do, I mean, countries are approaching this in different ways. I think what, what we're seeing is a, um, uh, a lot more nuance in terms of industrial policy. We're seeing in, some, in, in many instances a kind of resurgence of a kind of state capitalist model of development, but within a sort of broad WTO framework. So the things that developing countries could do in the 50s and 60s are much harder now. Um, in terms of what, what, we, what the international community could do to help developing countries, I think there could be more flexibility at the WTO. So the world's poorest countries are given greater flexibility and perhaps that ought to extend to, to middle income countries as well.